Hey, good morning, everyone. As you said, I'm uh, Luke Johnston, a resident at uh, Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Um, this morning, I'm presenting, or this afternoon now, I'm presenting our data uh, from a project looking at tranexamic acid, um, how we've been using it over the past several years since guidelines have been changed and uh, seeing how appropriate it was. There we go. Um, I have the following disclaimers to present, but no financial disclosures. Um, so the military's use of tranexamic acid has largely been shaped by uh, three main publications. Um, the first two come from the CRASH-2 trial, which was a large placebo-controlled randomized trial enrolling over 20,000 patients all over the world at various trauma centers that um, ultimately showed an all-cause mortality reduction with a relative risk of 0.91 for patients that received TXA. Uh, that trial was um, further analyzed in a second publication that looked at the subsets of patients um, who got TXA within three hours from injury and then those who got TXA between three and eight hours of injury. And they interestingly showed that the mortality benefit from TXA is not only limited to getting it less than three hours, but mortality is actually increased if you got TXA three hours or later from your time of injury. And uh, furthermore, the closer you got your TXA to the time of injury, the greater the relationship to mortality reduction. Uh, finally, this was really brought into the military community in the MATTERS study, which was a retrospective review of TXA's use at a single uh, military treatment hospital in Afghanistan that reviewed um, 800 or so patients retrospectively and identified TXA as an independent predictor of survival in especially those patients who um, received massive transfusions, as uh, mentioned in one of the other presentations. So from these um, multiple publications, the uh, Joint Trauma Service as well as the um, Tactical Combat Casualty Care Guidelines were updated to include TXA administration as part of the care for combat casualties. Um, and I have the guidelines listed here for the Joint Trauma Service as well as for um, Tactical Combat Casualty Care for field care and for evacuation care, both emphasizing the importance of patients having a massive transfusion as being those patients that should be uh, getting TXA. So the goals of our study were first to say, how has the US military been using TXA since uh, the publication of these guidelines? Have we been using it appropriately? And finally, um, are there any complications we can identify that are associated with TXA? Um, to do that, we um, queried the uh, Joint Trauma Service database for all patients that were evacuated to our military treatment facility from 2011 through 2015. Uh, we collected initial injury data as well as early treatment data and then uh, longer term complications both from their inpatient medical records at our uh, military treatment facility in CONUS as well as their outpatient medical records to see specifically if they had any venous thromboembolic events. For TXA administration, we considered it appropriate in patients who got a massive transfusion to find as greater than 10 units of any blood product within 24 hours. And then we broke down inappropriate administration to several different error types. So commission errors would be patients who got TXA but did not get a massive transfusion. So we would um, call this inappropriate or over-administration. Omission errors would be a missed opportunity or a patient who did require a massive transfusion, however, they never got a dose of TXA. And then a late error would be a case where we could identify that a patient received TXA greater than three hours from their time of injury. Uh, we then calculated quarterly error rates for every 90-day period within our study and looked at the changes in those rates over time. Uh, for our results, we identified 455 patients who were evacuated to Walter Reed. Um, of these, 173 got a massive transfusion and 145 got TXA. We identified a total of 70 errors. Um, and then you can see the VTE rates associated with each of these groups here. And this kind of breaks down what we considered appropriate, the different types of errors and as well. Um, this kind of busy graph, um, I include really just to highlight that within the massive transfusion and the no massive transfusion subgroups, um, the only thing that really differed in their initial presentation was their heart rates, um, indicating that maybe that was something that providers were using or encouraging them to use TXA. Um, over otherwise not, but there are otherwise their injury severity score, other vital signs, other initial presentation labs, mechanisms of injuries, as well as a host of other variables we collected were not statistically different um, within those subgroups. So here you see the results of the error rates over time. Uh, the graph on your uh, left is the omission error rates. 
Um, the larger the circle means there were more patients cared for within that quarter, and those are used to weight the linear regressions. Uh, so you can see that we've done an excellent job with omission errors. Those have decreased to basically zero at the end of our study, um, which means we're not missing opportunities. Patients are getting TXA, and we're doing a good job reducing more or attempting to reduce mortality by doing that. However, over the same time period, the rates of commission errors increased at nearly the same rate of the decrease. So patients were getting TXA who were not getting massive transfusions, and in many of these cases, these are patients getting TXA who didn't receive a single unit of blood. Sorry. Um, furthermore, on uh, multiple logistic regression, TXA and the injury severity score were both found to independently predict VTE, and TXA itself had an odds ratio of 2.5. We're one of the, uh, or we are the first group to find this in a combat trauma population at least. So in conclusion, um, we've been doing a good job decreasing missed opportunities in our use of TXA in combat trauma. However, over the same time period, we're finding an increase in inappropriate over-administration. Uh, this is especially concerning given our finding of increased or an association with uh, venous thromboembolic events. Um, based on this, we'd recommend a review of our current guidelines to recommend who should, but really especially who should not be receiving TXA, and consider revising um, guidelines for uh, first responders such as our medics and corpsmen, uh, as at least anecdotally this seems to be where some of these commission errors are occurring. Um, we need further research then to uh, receive who, or to identify who's going to receive the maximum benefit from TXA and how to limit complications in those patients who have received it. Thank you. Our references. I have a couple questions. Um, for the commission errors, so those that got the TXA that shouldn't have, I may have missed it, but how much blood did they actually, or blood product did they actually receive? So it ranged from zero to nine units, as 10 units was our cutoff for a massive transfusion. Um, the mean was. I've displayed here, but um, at least four or five of those patients received zero units of blood. So their total averaged 1.1 um, for the no TXA and 4.4 units okay. for those who did get TXA. So some of them were close to the massive transfusion threshold. There were, there was one patient with eight, one patient with nine, then okay. the rest were below five. And then, so that, and I think I saw your VT complication rate was like 17% in the commission group. Yeah, they're high. Uh, and why do you think that is? Do you think it's from the TXA? And did you look at that specifically? Well, I, I know the numbers are small. I mean, I can tell you it's an independent risk factor for it on multiple logistic regression. So controlling for, I think we included 13 different variables that met a p-value of less than 0.15 on like chi-squared or t-test were included in multiple logistic regression. And then we used that and ISS and TXA were both independent of each other in their prediction of venous thromboembolic events. For the whole... Uh, for this group taken as a whole. Yeah. In subsets analysis, it's an independent risk factor for those who received a massive transfusion and the, it just didn't quite reach statistical significance in a subset analysis of non-massive transfusion patients, where part of that is because only 18 patients met the commission error group with only, but still with an event rate of 16.7%. So then do you think the, the pendulum has swung too far? I mean, because it probably the, the commotion, commission errors have increased over time because there's more aware, awareness of TXA, people say issues are pre-hospital. I mean, I mean, do you think you're... Yeah, that, that's our concern and our argument. Um, we, as an anecdote, we recently had a patient evacuated who, he suffered an upper extremity um, traumatic amputation but he had a tourniquet placed immediately, lost almost no blood, never had any unstable vital signs from any records we could get, never received a unit of blood, but was given TXA prior to arrival to his level two. That was kind of one of the things that was an impetus for us looking over this study, and so we think that is what's going on. So what you're saying is there should probably be some changes to TCCC, because obviously we're teaching our medics that one of the things that, that is in their bag is TXA. Absolutely, sir. And I'll be honest with you, like when I was teaching people for the for the Marine Corps role too, I'm like if you're throwing a couple units of blood immediately when they arrive in the STP, I would give them TXA right there. I mean, I, and that comes from my training. I mean, if they're getting more than a couple units of blood, it's hard to. I mean, you have the numbers, and you can say, okay, you can predict somebody's going to require a massive transfusion based on vital signs X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, but practically speaking, how do you use that? And, and if you have somebody unstable who you're, who are you're giving blood products to, I'm going to 
likely give them TXA right off the bat in the shock trauma platoon, and they may not reach the 10 unit threshold. I don't know how you feel about that. Well, I, I think, like you guys just said, it, 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 we can make a much different argument once you get to your role two or your role three where there is blood versus you're asking your medic or corpsman or somebody who this is all they have in their bag, do they think that they have a massive bleed coming up? So, sorry, in the interest of time, I think we have to move on. So yes, thank sir. you. Thank you.